On a recent visit to the Indianapolis Zoo, I spent time watching a charismatic mammal known as a ring-tailed lemur. I could watch these playful primates all day long. They are one of about a hundred species of lemur, native to the island of Madagascar. They belong to the taxonomic order primate, which is a kind of mammal that first appears in the fossil record not long after the extinction of the big dinosaurs. The Cenozoic is the new geological era that followed that mass extinction, which happened nearly 66 million years ago. The Cenozoic is the era we are currently in. Geological eras are further subdivided into periods and epochs, and the Paleocene is the first epoch of the Cenozoic, and an age when mammals of all kinds were diversifying. Over a span of 10 million years, global temperatures increased gradually and were punctuated by a sharp increase of as much as 8 degrees Celsius around the boundary of the Paleocene and the Eocene epochs. It is at this time, around 55 million years ago, when the oldest primate fossils appear. And they likely diverged from tree-dwelling squirrel-like mammals known as a plesiodapiform. Primate skeletons are noticeably different from the skeletons of other mammals and reflect the kinds of modifications that would be advantageous for life in the trees. Traits like long and slender limbs with shoulder and elbow joints that rotate freely. To form a shoulder, primates retain the clavicle, a bone that is either lost or greatly reduced in other mammals. Muscles of the shoulder attach to the clavicle and the scapula, but only the clavicle attaches to the rest of the skeleton, and that weak connection permits good range of motion. And when normalized for body size, primates have impressive upper body strength, whereas forelimbs and other mammals will often trade off strength for speed or stability. Primate fingers and toes grow flattened nails instead of claws, and the first digit is offset and opposes the rest, and this allows for excellent dexterity in handling all kinds of objects. In the skull, the snouts are shortened, and there's an increase in cranium size relative to total body size. Primates also have front-facing eyes, binocular vision, that allows for three-dimensional depth perception and the ability to see in three colors. Most mammals can discern two colors and thus have dichromatic vision. But with trichromatic vision from red-sensitive cone cells in the eye, much more information about food, mating cues, and other aspects of life in the forest can be evaluated. With color vision and depth perception, the visual cortex of the primate brain is especially well-developed, and this trait has profoundly shaped the evolution of that lineage. Two major monophyletic clades are currently recognized, the Strepsirhini and the Haplorhini. The Strepsirhini have a moist rhinarium, which is the fleshy tip of their nose and so these animals are known for their wet noses. The Haplorhini have dry noses, at least when they're not fighting off a head cold. The Haplorhini are also naturally deficient in gulonolactone oxidase, the enzyme that allows most mammals to synthesize their own vitamin C. The entire Haplorhini lineage has a non-functional gene that mutated in the Eocene when primates and other mammals were rapidly diversifying. And of course, we are part of that lineage. And yes, we run the risk of vitamin C deficiencies unless we are eating enough fruits and vegetables. Around 34 million years ago, sea levels dropped due to a globally cooling climate that formed extensive ice caps and glaciers. Mammals that included monkeys and rodents from the African Arabian landmass are thought to have crossed the Atlantic Ocean on a vegetative raft that may have formed from storms and dying forests. 
These refugees colonized what is now South America and gave rise to the Platyrrhini lineage of primates, what are now commonly known as the New World monkeys. Capuchins, howler, and woolly monkeys fall into this group. These are the monkeys with side-opening nostrils and prehensile tails that they use for locomotion, anchoring, and signaling. Old World, or the Catarrhini monkeys, are the lineages that remained in Africa, Arabia, and Asia. These include baboons, macaques, gibbons, and all of the great apes. Nostrils in this group are downward facing, with the monkeys lacking prehensile tails, and the apes having lost their tails entirely. Proconsul apes were a branch of Catarrhini that gave rise to all modern great apes, including humans. Proconsul fossils have been found in Europe and Africa, dated to 20 million years ago, an epoch known as the Miocene. Many of the plants and animals of the Miocene belong to groups we would recognize today. The early Miocene climate was warm, but with extensive mountain building and shifting continents, the climate eventually cooled to shrink forests and expand grasslands. The global cooling also lowered sea levels to expose previously submerged land that allowed the first apes to colonize parts of Europe. But life at higher latitudes was likely more precarious due to changing seasons and an ever-shifting food supply that resulted in periods of starvation. The evidence for this is preserved in the tooth enamel of fossil apes, where teeth develop abnormally during periods of chronic stress. An important genetic mutation likely occurred during this period of food scarcity, and one that contributes to our ability to put on weight quickly when consuming high fructose diets. And that is, ancestral apes lost the ability to quickly break down uric acid. And so blood concentrations of this molecule are much higher in apes than what we see in other primates or even other mammals. Uricase is the enzyme needed to break down uric acid, which itself is the breakdown product of purines that come from molecules like DNA, RNA, and adenosine triphosphate. When ancestral apes lost the ability to make uricase, the surplus uric acid increased our body's sensitivity to converting fructose into visceral fat, which would have had profound survival benefits during times of scarcity. Apes in Europe lasted about 10 million years before disappearing from the fossil record. Apes in Africa may have descended from these European refugees, or may have split off from Asian apes. Relatively few ape species exist now, and apes have always been a very small branch of a much larger primate family tree. But they are fascinating to us because we are hominins, one of the handful of ape lineages. With new fossil finds and discoveries of living species, primate taxonomy and the phylogenetic story continues to update. Around 120 new species have been discovered in the past 30 years, most of these in Madagascar. And it is in Madagascar where primates and many plants and animals are under the greatest threat of extinction due to human development pressures on the native forest. Around 500 species of primates are currently known, and of the great apes, we are the only species not in danger of imminent extinction.